Well, um, God is good, and his, his spirit is definitely here among us, and, um, and, and I appreciate that. You know, um, when we get um, speakers to come here, I try to pick the, the best that are out there. And when I say that, it doesn't mean that they're popular in the world, like a television evangelist or anything like that. But some of the caliber of men that, and women that we've had here and preached from this pulpit, uh, in the eyes of God's kingdom, are great men. And I have one sitting here with us this, this evening uh, who has traveled all over the place, preaches in so many places, but not only that, but he's, he's like a caring uh, father figure to many. Um, he's a person who really cares about God's word, and about God's prayer, praying, and so forth. And um, I'm just glad that I got to meet him in California. If it wasn't for California, we wouldn't meet. And uh, going out to those conferences out there and, and meeting him. And uh, if you've got to spend any time with him, uh, one of the greatest things you'll see on his life is humility. And uh, I think that's missing a lot of ministries and pastors today. But uh, he's a great, great example. He's a great leader. And he's a great friend. And so I want to welcome Bishop as he comes and shares God's word with you tonight. Amen. God bless. Amen. Without exaggerating anything, standing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I was in Phoenix, about two weeks ago, I was opportune to speak or to preach the first Sunday after the pastor had passed on. I made a statement. I said, I had only one regret. And the regret is that I did not know him on time. I knew him for about 10 or 12 years now. And this is a man that have pastor, I've been pastoring for almost 59 years. I said, how come I didn't know him 40 years ago? 45 years ago. And that is what I also have for my beloved brother, your pastor. I sit down to say to myself, how come I didn't know him 20 years ago? Because he's a man that stand on the truth. A man that I will never, I use the word never, mama, you are hearing what I'm saying. I will never say he shouldn't come to Nigeria. We are tired of him. I would like him to be coming every year. Amen? God will provide. It's God's job. <laughs> Amen? Yeah, God will do it. We will pray. God will do it and bring. If you listen to news, you know that Nigeria as a nation, need 
more teachers than preachers. Because if God doesn't intervene, the door to ministration of God's word will be closed in that country. But while the door is still open, we want to do everything we can to sow seed through teaching of the word of God into the heart of men and women so that they can rise and resist any attempt that herald spirit who want to raise in that nation. So, thank God for the life of my brother, Pastor. Thank you for who you are. And thank you for having me here. I also want to thank the church. I came last year with a body. And that's having a car. And pastor helped me that today I now have the car I can move from place to place without any fear of breakdown of the vehicle. So I want to thank the church. Amen? But tonight, I want to talk on whom you believe in. Whom you believe in. Let's pray. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you adoration. You are our Lord. You are our healer. You heal us spiritually. You heal us physically. You are our provider. Thank you, Father. Because of who you are, we are more than conquerors. Thank you, Lord, for the understanding. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you, Father, for the revelation. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the knowledge that you've given unto us. Help us to understand and help us to apply that which you reveal to us. That your name and your name alone be glorified. That your blessing abide with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Whom you believe in. Do you believe in Christ? I'm going to concentrate on Christ, but there are some places I may bring in your pastor. Whom you believe in. What do you do with whom you believe in? What do you do with whom you believe in? What do you do for whom you believe in. If you truly believe in Jesus Christ, what do you do for him? What do you do in him? What do you do with him? 
if you believe. Let's look at two or three scriptures. Matthew chapter 4. Verse number 18 to 20. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simeon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Let's go to John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Verses 35. And Jesus heard that they have cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? 36. He answered and said, Who is he? Lord, that I may believe in him. 37. Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. 38. Then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Amen? Let's go to another verse on that chapter. Luke chapter 1. Thirty-five. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. That is this. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relatives, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen? 45. Bless is she who believe, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which we are told how from the Lord. We read some scriptures. This evening, I have 12 form of questions that I'm going to read to us. Whom you believe in? 
I really want us to examine ourselves. If I truly believe in Jesus Christ, how am I living my life for him? How am I living my life with him? How am I living my life in him? What am I doing? When Paul, who was once named Saul, did not believe in Jesus, he went about persecuting the church. On his way to Damascus to continue on the same mission, he encountered the person who is our Lord, Jesus Christ. And he asked a question, Lord, what do you want me to do? So, the first question or first statement I want to make to Ross, if you truly believe, if I truly believe in Jesus Christ, I will spend time, you will spend time with him. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you don't spend time with him, I doubt if you truly believe in him. I don't know all the reasons why people divorce each other. In marriages, they have different reasons. But I believe one of the reasons is couples not spending time with each other. Like you are always a job. You leave home around 6 o'clock in the morning only to come back around 8 o'clock. And when you come back at 8 o'clock, you glue to the television, you don't give time to your wife. One day, your wife will ask, choose between me and television, or choose between me and your job. But if you want to develop a strong relationship with your wife, what do you do? Or with your husband, what do you do? Spend time. If you want to know God more and more, spend time with God. There's one thing that bothers me today in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the churches. We have seven days in a week. And we are comfortable Spending one hour in the seven days with God. One hour. Many of us don't come to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And if there are programs, like, even on those days, they are specific for other, other Monday for women, Tuesday for men. Wednesday for my late father in the Lord said to Ross that the late Abishabi Lahosa, he said it is born again Christians that go to Bible study on Wednesdays. That was he told us those days. I don't know if that is true today. But what I'm trying to say, at the end of the day, you find that we pastors, we are comfortable in holding one hour service in the name of first service, second service, third service, and we rush through it. And let me tell you, this, your member, only spend one hour in a week and how do you expect them to know who Jesus Christ is? 
when you don't spend time with him, if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, if you truly believe in God, you will discipline yourself to create time and fellowship with him. The more you fellowship with him, the more you know him. And the more you know him, the more the power of God manifests through you. He flows through you the more you know him. Number two, the more you know him, the more you worship him. The man that was healed, when he met Jesus Christ, we read in John chapter 9, that the man, Jesus asked, do you know who he is? He said, who is he that I may believe? Jesus Christ said, I am here. And what did he do? He said, I believe. The next thing he did, it was, he worshipped him. I'm not surprised David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. If you believe in God, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will create time to do what? To worship him. To exalt his holy name. To tell him how great, how wonderful he is. To let him know he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the mighty counselor. There is none like him. We worship him. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Worship him. If you truly believe in him, no matter what happens, you worship him. Amen? Number three. Whom you worship, whom you believe, you are not ashamed of. Whom you believe, you are not ashamed of. You believe in your wife. That is why when you go out, you introduce your wife. This is my wife. Because you believe in your wife. Amen? You go out with your wife. And your wife will hold break for the first three seconds or four seconds. If you have not introduced her, it will give you a sign telling you. <laughs> and if it, she gives you a sign and you refuse to, she will do it herself. You say, I'm the, wi I'm the wife. Amen? Are you ashamed of Jesus Christ? Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. I am not ashamed. The school you attend, yes, they may tell you don't pray in the school, don't do this in the school, but your lifestyle should make them know you are a different person. In the place of work, oh, we are not allowed to share the gospel. That's not true. You are not allowed to talk the gospel. Doesn't mean you are not allowed to act the gospel. You, can, you may not talk, but you can act. And actions speak louder than words. I watch a lot of movies. But do I not know that the people who are acting, they are liars? I know they are liars. Why do I say they are liars? Because that is not their true life. Is that true? It's not their true life. They are acting. And you see them crying. You see them, they die. Many of them die, die. How many times will you die? Every movie you die. 
It means you are a liar. But I still watch. There are some of them are very actors. I know the act one, the act two, the act three. I still do what, and some of them they cut their leg. But in the real life, the leg is still there. All camera tricks. But I still do what? Watch. I don't know where I'm talking to somebody. Wherever you are viewing this program, maybe you are the one I'm talking to. You watch these movies. You believe they minister to you. So don't tell me that the environment I am living in, I'm not allowed to speak the word of God at. And you are not pretending. You are not really pretending you are living your true you. Because Christianity, to my knowledge, to my belief, is not religion. It's a life you live. Amen? So if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, you will not be ashamed of him. Number four, if you truly believe in him, you will run to him. You will talk to him. You will pray to him. You know you cannot do it yourself. I personally believe if you don't pray, it means you have a lot of pride in you. It means you believe, I don't need God. I can do it myself. But when you know that you know that you know that you cannot do it yourself, what do you do? You pray. And with the little experience I have as a Christian and as a minister, Many Christians struggle when it comes to prayers. I don't know why. But if truly the spirit of humility abides in us, we should be able to run to God. It's a call unto me on the days of trouble. It's a ask you shall be given. Knock the door shall be open. Seek, you shall find. Humble yourself and run to God. Whom you believe, you run to. For example, if you believe that your uncle has the money and your uncle loves you, when you are in need, what do you do? You call, run to your uncle. Amen? You run to him because you believe he will give to you. I, I don't know. Some of our children play this game on us. They know either dad or mom who is the better giver. Amen? When, if the father is the bet, better giver, when they are in need, they don't go to mom. Because they know mom will question them before she gives it out. But if father doesn't question, what do they do? They go to the dad and say, dad, I need this. They run to who we give to them. And God said, he will supply our needs 
according to riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen? Whom you believe in, you run to. You believe in your pastor. What do you do? You run to him. You believe in your pastor. Give him a call. When you don't understand what is going on. So call my pastor. Why do you say call my pastor? Because you believe in him. Amen? Number Number what now? If you are following me. Number five. Whom you believe in, you die for. Whom you believe in, you die for. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you will do what? Be willing to die for him. There are many ways to die. For example, you are in a place of somebody who's supposed not to talk to you. Because you have accepted Jesus Christ, this person starts insulting you. And you look at him. Physically, you can squeeze him. And part of you want you to, why not squeeze him? And you say, no, I can't do that. You swallow every insult that it rain on you. What are you doing? You're proving yourself that I am dead in Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life I now live, I live by faith in the son of man that loved me and die for me. I am no more living my own life. The old man is crucified. I die daily. I die to my desires that are not pleasing to God. Whom you love, whom you believe in, You die for whom you believe in. Number six, whom you believe in, you don't run him down. Know what I mean by run down? You don't run him down. You don't talk bad of him. You don't gossip him. You don't tear him down. Whom you believe in. This morning we were having breakfast. And as we are talking, my brother made a statement and said, why not introduce him to our church? Within me, I said, this guy is a, a good disciple. Because he believed in the church. He's not running down the church. He's promoting the church. And this evening, we are talking again. And pastor was saying, I have a big church. He made another statement. Though we are small, but we are great. I didn't make any sign, but within me, I said, yes. This is a true disciple. Because this quality that I'm making mention of, I see, he, I see them in him. 
whom you believe in. You don't run the person down. Amen? Number seven. How many of you believe in giving? Who you believe in, you give. If you don't believe, you will not give. Whom you believe in, you give. Let me come this way. God created us. Amen? And God believed in us. If God doesn't believe in us, he will not have risked his only begotten son and gave him for us. The Bible says, for God so loved that he did what? He gave. You love Jesus Christ, then your giving will demonstrate if truly you love him. If you struggle at giving, then you check your belief. Because if you believe in something, you give to it. If you don't believe in it, you struggle at giving. But when you truly believe, you give. You don't think twice because you believe. Number nine. Oh, thank you. You are really following me. I may mention today that you run to. Okay? I want to say this. The difference between running to and praying. I can run to pastor. And pastor on his own will protect me. But I'm not asking him anything. I just run to him. But when you spend hours, days, then believe in the power of God. He believed in God. When he knew that the king had signed the declaration saying anybody that worship will be thrown into the lion's den, what did they do? He did not stop praying. The Bible says he went to his house as usual. He opened his window, faced Jerusalem, did what? Pray three times a day. In the other occasion, the scripture says, when he discovered that the prophecy of Jeremiah, the time the seven years have completed, what did they do? He went on his knee to pray. And the scripture tells us that when Daniel went on his knee to pray, immediately God gave the answer. But did the answer get to Daniel immediately? No. If we were Daniel, first day we didn't get the answer, second day we did not get the answer, what will you do? You look for alternative. But because Daniel believed, he remained he did not give up. When you believe, you don't give up your prayer points. You don't pr give up praying. You keep on praying because you believe. 
Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Paul said, I, what I have committed into his hand is protected. Do you believe? Do you believe to take what the world we call risk when everything seems to be over? It looks as you are alone. But you refuse to accept you are alone. You remain with God because you believe in him. Because you believe. Number nine. Whom you believe, you honor. How do you honor your pastor? Are you sure you truly honor him? How do you honor the God that died for you when you were his enemy? When you hated him, when you were in your sin, you were doing things contrary to his command. He loved you and died for you. Now that your eyes are open, now that you know what he has done for you, how do you honor him? Pastor was telling me of the funeral they went, was it last Saturday? Okay. In Phoenix. How thousands of people, you said thousands of people? Huh? Over 1,000 people came. Why did they come? They came to honor him. They, they believe in him. They believe in him. They honor him because they believe in him. But I don't want you to honor your pastor after the Lord has called him home. Honor him while he's alive. Amen? Because Yes, we honor what he have done by going there. But he didn't see all those ones. Yes, he see it from heaven, but not on edge here. It's not a sin. Pastor, I say it. It is not a sin for church to honor you. It is not a sin. Has any of us seen God? No. And the Bible made it clear that if we don't, I'm not saying worship, but honor him. Appreciate him. Let him know that you appreciate what he's doing, the sacrifice he's making. Amen? But above all, above all, let us give if there's 200 or 300 or 5,000 percent honor, let's give all to our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you. If not Jesus Christ, Andrew will not be here today. 
if not Jesus Christ, who am I? My parents never even believe that anything good can come from me. But God took me. When the people around me saw nothing in me, God took me, even when I didn't know him. Even when I persecuted the church. He took me and said, son, I'm going to change you. And he transformed my life. And since he transformed my life, if I stand before God, if I say I have not failed him, I'm a liar. In many things, I have failed him, but he never failed me. If you truly believe in him, do what? Honor him. Amen? Number 10. When you honor him, respect him. Respect his presence. I love what this church wrote by the door or as you enter. No uh, bottle of water. I have not seen the members here bringing food inside this place and start eating. I've been to places where service will be going on, people will be eating. Hold on. Let's honor our God. Let's respect him. Let's respect him. You are in the presence of God. Your phone rings. What do you do? You rush out to answer the call. And you come back. You do that in my church, I will say stay outside. I'm sorry. You just get up and Go outside and answer the call. I'll say, even if I'm not preaching, I will interrupt and say, hey, stay outside. Don't come in. He's, what, what are you saying? I'm sorry. I'm not asking your pastor to do it. I say, I do it in my church in Nigeria. Why? We, your president be talking to you and you will leave the president of your president to go and answer call? No, will you do it? You will not do it. But why do you do it in the presence of God? What you cannot do in the presence of your governor, what you cannot do in the presence of your boss in the office, you do it in the church. Because if the pastor tells you, you will leave the church and go to another church. But you've forgotten you can go to any church, it is one kingdom. As, as long as they believe in Jesus Christ. What am I saying? When there was no phone, were people not living? How do we solve problem? I ask myself, every Sunday, like now, today I went to look for table clock, because I don't change my time. My wristwatch is Nigeria time. I don't change it. So anywhere I am, I like to have American time so that I know the time I am here and the time in Nigeria. But the question I ask myself, Andrew, when there was no telephone, how did you communicate with the church in your country? Some Sundays, I speak to the church. 
they put me on Skype or put on phone. The church hear me. There are some Sundays I preach. I'm in America here. I preach to them in Nigeria. But hold on. When phone was not existing, did we not exist? Let's honor God. Amen? When we are in the presence of God, let's respect him. Let's re this is the house. This is the place we have said it is the house of God. What do we do? Respect the place. Honor the place. Amen? Number 11. If you believe in someone, you will advertise the person. You believe in somebody and you cannot advertise the person. That means don't believe in that person. You cannot tell your neighbor about Jesus Christ. It means you don't believe in him. John chapter 2, Mary, Jesus and his disciples went for a marriage feast. And suddenly they went out of wine. Mary went to Jesus and said, they have no wine. And Jesus Christ said, Woman, my time has not come. Leave me alone. You know what? Mary did not argue with Jesus Christ. Mary didn't say, Don't you know I'm your mother? <laughs> but what did she, she do? Because she knew who Jesus Christ is. She knew the problem would not be from Jesus Christ. She turned to the people and said to them, whatever he tells you, do it. That statement, whatever, I like in James, whatsoever. Whatever he tells you, do it. Amen? What was she doing? She was advertising Jesus. Because Jesus was not the only person there. There were other visitors. But Mary wants them to know who Jesus Christ is. And the only way she would do it then was to do what? Advertise him. And Jesus Christ now said, go and feed the water pot. They went. And they got wine. And the Bible says that is the first miracle in Canaan. Advertise Jesus Christ. As you advertise Jesus Christ, also advertise your pastor. What do you mean? I say advertise your pastor. In Second King chapter 5, a general was a leper man. A house girl said to her mistress, if my master will go to Israel, there is a man that will hear him, a prophet. And the king, the general didn't even believe. He went to the king. And the king tore his garment. I said, no, this man is looking for my trouble. Elisha said, send for him. Tell him to come. He came. Elisha said, go and dip or wash yourself seven times in River Jordan. Advertise. If that house girl have not advertised Elisha. Will Elisha have he? No. There is gift in your pastor. As we will say in Nigeria, your pastor is loaded. Amen? He's loaded with truth. And you shouldn't be selfish to be eating that food alone. Advertise. There is no 
pastor like my pastor. Amen? And when they come, he may not be ready, but because you've done it, what will happen? The Holy Ghost will come and miracle will happen. Because you believe. Amen? You have a strong commitment to the vision. Whom you believe, you have a strong commitment. For example, this is a church. Do you know the vision of this church? Are you committed to the vision of this church? If you believe in Jesus Christ, what is the vision, what is the mission of Jesus Christ? When Paul did not believe, he persecuted. But when he believed, he changed from persecuting to preaching. He became committed. So if you truly believe, you will do what? Get committed to the vision. When you are committed, you are concerned about the growth. Why are we where we are? Not to criticize, not to find uh, sin or error, but what do I do? Last week, I sent to Nigeria to uh, pastors. I said, I want to give you an essay. You're going to write an essay for me. Pastor, writing essay? I said, yes. Describe how a plant grows. What does it take a seed to transform from a seed to a plant? What does it take? By the time you are able to describe that, then you'll be able to describe how a church grows. What it takes. If a farmer don't care for the seed, the seed will die. So church, if we believe in Jesus Christ, God expects actions from us. God expects you to do something for him. To do something in him. To do something with him. He's not saying you can do it alone. No. That is why he said, I will not leave you often. He told the children and to the disciples. In Acts 1, 8. Terry year, you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost have come upon you, you shall be weaknesses. We cannot do it alone. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. We need to say, God, help me. I believe in you. Help me. If we truly surrender, because we believe, we love him, we spend time with him, we worship him, we run to him, we share the good news, we pray to him, we don't run him down, we respect him, we honor him, we give to him, our life will not be the same. God who is always faithful, 
will keep us shining every day. God bless you. Amen. I just want to make one comment that uh, as pastor was preaching. And he said, we all fail at times. What is failure? What does failure mean to you? To not obey God? Okay. Anyone else? Just speak out what you think it is. Giving up. All right, smarty pants, Bob back there. An opportunity to learn. Okay. Don't be shy. Not to achieve something that we want. Okay. Someone else. Come on. You won't fail. I'm going to give you the definition of failure. I, I believe, m myself, I believe that a person who fails is a person who never does anything. Thank you. Hey, happy birthday. <clears throat> no. The definition of failure is the opportunity to get it right the next time. That's what failure is. It's another opportunity to do it right the next time. Everyone has that opportunity to do it right the next time. Failure is nothing to be ashamed of. It's part of life. Show me a person who's never failed, and I'll show you a person who has failed at doing nothing. Failure or doing something takes risk. You have to take a risk. Faith is taking a risk. It's not just settling back and saying, okay. But how many enjoyed tonight? Amen. Got some good stuff to chew on and um, some good stuff to think about. And let's... Uh, Let's advertise the church. Let's advertise Jesus. Amen. And um, get it out there. Tell them you you got to come. You got to come and and hear what's going on. God's doing stuff. Amen. Don't make stuff up. You know. Don't over exaggerate it. But give them your testimony. What has God done in your life? How have you benefited by being a part of this church? And always remember, the grass always seems greener on the other side of the fence. But there's a reason for that. They use more fertilizer. And I'll leave it. Amen. Let's just pray, okay? Father, thank you for those who came out and those who are watching. Father, we pray that you would be a blessing to them through your servant tonight. Lord, we pray, God, as we separate, that we will invite someone Sunday morning to come to church, to hear the man of God from Africa. Or I should say, to come to hear what God says through a man from Africa. And as we go our separate ways, Lord, continue to give us protection. Give us traveling mercies. And Father, help us to interact and intersect one another before Sunday. To call someone just to say hello. Someone you haven't seen. Maybe you could pay him a visit. Sometimes it's not a visit of hours. It can be just a 10, 15, 20 minute visit in their home or invite them to your home, or just go to have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and say, I was just thinking of you, and I want you to know I love you, and you haven't been at church, and I miss you. 
That's not only the job of the pastor. Amen? So, Father, thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, we, Bishop, before you leave. Amen.